Kipe Mugume. Kanara, a very, very good evening to you. It started quite as a small day, but grew bigger. And vote counting is still going on in sampling stations. How are the results looking like? Because that is what everyone wants to hear. Kanari. Well, Simon Serwanja, I am here in Bujeri town and I'm actually trying to give you pictures of how Bujeri town feels like. That's the feel. People are all over the streets, you know, waiting to hear who will emerge as the victor. But the atmosphere here shows that actually Asman Basadid was in the lead. Now, Asman Basairwa has actually uh, been uh, in the lead for the last three hours and uh, uh, according to the results we've gotten, at least he has a 75% lead. But those are just provisional results. They are not official results from the Electoral Commission. But of course, uh, they are still waiting for other polling centers where the, some of uh, the ballot papers are still being counted so that they can be taken to the district headquarters and then they are tallied to see who will emerge as the victor. But as for now, every Everyone is on street and uh, they are celebrating and jubilating and most of them are singing out actually Asman Basalirwa's name and they are raising his pictures high to show his early lead. Solomon? So um, did you, do you, Canary, do you have the actual results uh, that were, you know, given at that particular polling station? Because yes, there could be some jubilation, but do you have numbers and figures to that jubilation? Absolutely, Solomon. I'm going to actually sample you here on some figures that uh, we have, uh, you know, uh, gotten uh, a hand on. Uh, these are actually some of the results that uh, have been on the DR forms. For example, in Bujiri, in Isike Primary School, NRM's Okecho John Francis got 96, Gemma got 89, and FDC got 26. Uh, that is uh, where the candidate won. And then Chirunda Catholic Church. NRM got 123, Jema candidate, that is Asman Basara, got 107, then FDC got 43. Then let's move on to Mira. NRM got 87 votes, Jema got 103, and FDC got 65. The other polling station where Jema and actually NRM got a draw is Chisinde, COU. NRM and Jema got 189 while FDC got 41. And uh, other, other, other results that we have actually just received right now, now as we speak. At Bujiri Parents, where the polling station started from A up to M, Gemma has 122, while NRM has 123. From N up to Z, NRM has 127, and Gemma has 106. Uh, just to give you one last one, here at uh, Bukodi Technical, Asman Basadirwa got 163, while John Francis Okecho got 130, while Namatende got 41. So actually, according to the results we are seeing from here, we have about 75%. Uh, uh, it shows that Asman Basadirwa is in the lead. And what you're seeing, Solomon, in, in, the, in the camera is some of the Asman Basalwa supporters, most of them who are young people. It is yet to be seen if actually these people went to the ballot and voted, but it was actually a very, very high vigilancy from the young people and actually the women themselves for the first time. Solomon? Mugume, thank you very much for that update. We'll be coming back to you shortly. But let's go over to NBS's Joseph Sabiti, who is also closely following the developments and the results as they trickle in. Joseph, very good evening to you. What can you tell us from where you're standing from? Well, this is supposed to be the final place where the final results and declaration should be made at the district headquarters here where the tally center uh, from the district electoral commission is. Uh, for now, we do not have much activity because the results have to be collected from the 28 polling stations across the municipality and delivered here before final verification and declaration by uh, the Electoral Commission is done. Now, what we know is that from provisional results, again, I have to be specific and say these are provisional results because the, the authority of declaring the final results lies with the Independent Electoral Commission. What we get from the pro, uh, provisional results uh, is that uh, Gemma's Asman Basalura has taken an early lead and a lot of our pundits already calling the election in his favor. But we can only confirm that after declaration from uh, the Independent Electoral Commission. We actually uh, do not cite any of the candidates over here. I cannot recognize a few of the bigwigs from uh, the political parties, uh, people 
like the Honorable Salam Musumba of the FDC and as well as a, a few other people actually, the candid, all the three uh, candidates who were uh, tipped to be the uh, you know, favorites in this race, Solomon are not yet here. And so probably we'll be looking forward to in the next couple of minutes, uh, the Electoral Commission beginning to do the real vote tallying. But I can tell you, uh, uh, just like Kanari Mugume said, uh, when you move around, Town, there's already a celebration going on. These people have not even waited for the official declaration. They are flashing uh, the, their signs of victory and shouting, People Power, Our Power, the slogan that was used by Chadundo East MP uh, Robert Chagulani Sentamu and Asuman Basadra in this campaign. Maybe uh, they will be waiting for confirmation from the Electoral Commission to finally let the official celebrations begin. So long. Joseph, you also covered the elections all throughout since morning, and you've been visited. You visited different uh, uh, polling stations during the day. Is there anything that we may have missed that captured your eye? Well, I, I think in, in, in general, in general terms, it was a, a peaceful. There was uh, uh, the possibility of people actually going to the lines and lining up and casting their ballots. We, re we recorded, uh, you know, selected cases of uh, violence and, and maybe attempted uh, violence in, a, num in a, a few polling stations across the municipality. I think in general terms, I should say the election was not that bad compared to other elections across the country where we have seen outright confrontations between the state and as well as the voters. Today, actually, we did not register... A, a a lot of, uh, you know, confrontations between the officers of the Uganda police force and the supporters of the different candidates. But, but we, recorded, uh, we recorded rather isolated incidents of uh, actually confrontation between the voters and individuals whom they accused of trying uh, to tamper with the voting process. For example, one of the non-NRM leaders, one Moses Karangwa from Kayunga, was chased from one of the polling sessions uh, as the voters came out to allege that he was to smuggle or predict ballot papers. Again, a claim we are not uh, able to independently verify. What we know is that he was chased from that polling station. The highlight was the, the day, uh, the, rather the highlight of the day, I beg your pardon, was the incident that involved Bukoli Central MP and the NRM caucus vice chairperson in, in parliament, uh, the Honorable Solomon Silwanya, who had to flash a and actually pepper sprayed a fellow member of parliament who was trying to control the crowd from actually, you know, lynching him. He had to be chased out and he ran like a commoner today. I think that's what stood out in the process today. But I should say in general terms, it was an election that was void of nasty scenes that we have witnessed elsewhere. And again, I think the Electoral Commission uh, tried to respond to the concerns. I saw Justice uh, Simon Mujanyevi Amukama personally driving to Hindocha polling station where there were complaints by the voters. I saw him personally drive to Bujiri parents uh, polling station because people had intimated that a state uh, official was moving around trying to uh, smuggle in predict ballot papers. Uh, in, uh, other than those issues and of course a number of confrontations between people traveling in, in taxis and, and uh, you know the different political camps, uh, in, in overall terms I think it was an election that probably we have a lot of things to learn from. Joseph, uh, let me just uh, pause you right there, but I'm going to be coming to you. But let me go to Kanuri Mugume. Kanuri, the celebrations are still going on at that particular polling station, but what caught your eye today? What my eye today was how vigilant the voters were. It was actually quite um, an interesting moment trying to see the voters themselves chase members of parliament they did elect in the same area, you know. Uh, for example, when someone, Serwan, did come around and got out of the car, um, you know, they, they were so quick to notice uh, whatever he was doing. Actually, they, uh, them themselves did not even fear the fact that he was armed with a small firearm. They did not fear the fact that he had pepper spray and this could harm their eyes. What they did is pushed him away and kicked him out of the polling station until he ran to the close or you know, the nearby shops. Even when he did, actually the owners of the shops did pull him outside, pull him from the shops and threw him outside to the mob. He was almost lynched. He was almost lynched. And uh, you know, what was also interesting is that uh, Uganda police was watching on as everything was happening until, you know, later on when police was deployed and sort of saved him. But even after when he was saved, he kept on making grounds at the same polling center, which means that he had learned his lesson. It was quite interesting to see how events can turn out 
and uh, you know the government creates new municipalities at the same time uh, when it closed about 5 6 p.m you know that uh, nrm had lost it was quite an interesting event and i think for me that is what caught my eye solomon well um i, I again canary coming back to you uh, from the preliminary results and again we want to say clearly that it is the responsibility of the electoral commission to give uh, valid uh, valid results so to speak but um I mean, I just wanted you to take us through about the numbers and figures. And I think I'll also pose the same question to uh, Joseph Sabiti about the number of polling stations, the number of voters that that, that particular constituency has, and what could have, what could, what are the underlying factors that have sort of determined the results of the available, uh, available available results from the different polling stations. I think, let me, let, Karen, let me start with Joseph Sabiti, and then I come to you. Joseph, Bujiri itself as a municipality has some characteristics that could swing the vote, which wherever way. Can you give us some sort of analysis on that? Well, I think it's a very interesting constituency to watch because first, it's highly uh, multicultural and uh, it has a lot of uh, religious groupings actually right there existing within the same community. You have a number of tribes. It's one of those uh, constituencies where so many communities are actually, you know, settled together and coexisting. But, but we also know that there are a number of other factors that will determine. But before, before we, we get to that, let me, let me first have a, a quick conversation with the, spokes, the deputy spokesperson of the Uganda Police, Afani Patrick Onyango. Thank you for spending time to speak to us. Let's, let's start with the much talked about event of the day, the event that involved the member of parliament for Bukoli Central. A lot of people are asking, why is he still a free man? Uh, why is he what? Why, why is he still a free man? You know, you see, according to police, we normally get uh, complaints. Somebody has to come physically to get a complaint. But in the case where we are just getting information from members of the public on phones that have you, have, have you heard what happened here? Have you heard what happened here? We, have, we, 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 we normally open what we call a general inquiry file. To do a thorough inquiry and find out exactly what happened. So we cannot rush and arrest him. And we also need to know what was, uh, what prompted him to, to either pull out what he did uh, in that circumstances. So we are looking at a general picture. So we cannot rush and arrest somebody when we have not uh, uh, got a concrete information. Okay. Not from a hearsay. What we are having now, it is a hearsay. Okay. It is a I hearsay. I just wanted to give in. need to prove yes. first. Okay. Uh, be, be, because this is an incident that was captured on camera. Uh, the chairman of the Electoral Commission was asked about it, and he said he had no business flashing pistols at, at voters. That is intimidation. And many people thought that would be authority enough for you at least to take an interest in the case. And that's why I said we are looking at all that before we can make a concrete uh, decision. You cannot rush. What about if he was in danger? Because the pistol is holding, we also need to find out if it was uh, licensed. So all that, that's why we are saying we are carrying out a general inquiry. Okay. And we cannot rush to arrest somebody. Okay. In terms of uh, law enforcement, who, who is allowed to carry pepper spray, for example? Is, is it allowed for any citizen to be holding uh, stuff like that? There are pepper sprays which are particularly for Uganda police or the, for the security agencies. But there are those that private security organizations also sell to private people to protect themselves. In fact, ladies, we encourage if they can have in their handbags for protection in case they are attacked. Okay. Well, what is your assessment of, of the polling exercise from a policing perspective as, as a security man? How did the process go? No, the process went on well, smoothly. The elections were peaceful. For a security personnel like me, uh, in, a, in, in an election like this, the tensions were high. Everybody was on tension. And you find that in our cells, there is no any suspect that was arrested today in connection to this election. That means that the elections were peaceful. There was no any violence anywhere. Nobody was beaten anywhere. So that is the plus. Because we provide security, wherever you would move, 
you would get a security personnel. Wherever you would turn, you will see either police or our colleagues from the military. So we deployed adequately to avert any situation that would have happened. Okay. The, the constitutional mandate of maintaining law and order squarely lies with the police. Uh, was the, pres the heavy presence of the military justified? Sections of the population think it was intimidating the voters. What was the justification for the presence of the military in this operation? The presence is, as you all know, that our numbers, are, we, we are still few. So we could not adequately deploy uh, in all the, the places that we had mapped out as hotspots in this election. So we had uh, the Inspector General of Police had to request for more uh, manpower from UPDF. And indeed, the Chief of Defense Forces availed to us uh, the officers from UPDF. And we have been working jointly. We are in the lead of this operation, but they give us a backup support. So it was justified for the military to come and give support to police. Thank you very much. Thank you, Afande Patrick Onyango, the Deputy Spokesperson of the Uganda Police Force, Solomon, speaking about the events that we have been talking about and giving us the official position of the police in regard to the issue that stood out today, the question of the conduct and the events that faced uh, Bukoli Central Member of Parliament and the Vice Chairperson of the NRM Caucus in Parliament, the Honorable Solomon Siluani. Solomon. Well, Joseph Sabidi, live for us from uh, Buji. Joseph, will come to you shortly, but the issue of the deployment of the military in Buji has equal been one of concern and one that has been debated by very many people, especially after the ruling by the uh, Constitutional Court on, on where they pronounced themselves on military invasions of the August Assembly. And let me bring in uh, uh, Canary Mugume here. Canary, the presence of the military in Bujiri sometimes can be related to, uh, you know, threatening voters or intimidating voters. Did you see this uh, during the day while polling, uh, w while the elections were going on, Canary? Actually, Solomon, contrary to what is always being said, that the military intimidates voters, the military actually did bring out some calm situation. Um, you know, at some centers because there was chaos and uh, Uganda police completely and completely failed to calm down the situation. There was a mob that almost lynched Solomon Sirwan. There was uh, a mob that almost uh, uh, lynched Karangwa, the NRM district chairperson of Kayunga. Um, you know, they arrested him and sent him out. You know, it, it was Quite, uh, it was quite interesting to see how Uganda police failed. So when the military actually came in, uh, on the contrary, on the fact that uh, they intimidated the voters, they instead actually brought a calm situation and uh, the elections went on smoothly because now then they are some of the polling centers were not gazetted. So they used the military personnel to sort of gazette the, mil the polling centers to make sure that the voting goes on smoothly. So it's quite interesting and actually if uh, it, it is deployment, the military and other sister security agencies and uh, their deployment sort of was necessary in this specific election. Solomon? Uh, that, that is quite insightful, but um, I don't know if you can get through and uh, I think it's, it's only fair that we listen to some of the voters uh, who participated in this election and have some sort of feel and understanding of how the general event and, and exercise was. Can you talk to one or two people uh, who are at that particular police polling station? Uh, uh, well, Solomon, it is not quite safe here to step down there because everyone is dancing and jubilating the early lead of Asman Basadiwa. Maybe it was, if it was quite calm, it would be a safer place to go. But right now, everyone is celebrating and stepping on each other's toes. It might not be the best place to make an interview. But Solomon, earlier on, you asked me about some of the determinants of this election. And, uh, you know, I thought I could give you a point or two on my, according to my observation. One, I think, um, I think the switch of Liavala, which is uh, the NRM candidate, but also who came through as an independent, he switched, uh, you know, sides from uh, standing as a candidate and joined the Asuman Aliwa camp. Actually, that was quite interesting because he even joined the rally and uh, he had carried with him some supporters. And it was massive, actually, when he came with, with thousands and thousands of supporters. So that was an addition for Asuman Basadiwa. But also, 
Solomon, we have to put in, in mind that actually Asman Basairwa in 2016 stood in Bukoli South and lost to Gasta Mugoya. He got only 300 votes and he was in third position, which means in this election he was standing at only about 15%. But after bringing in Bobby Wine, and Bobby Wine gave him a lot of time to campaign and, of course, spread his ideology of people power, which actually, uh, you know, resonates so much with the young people. As you can see them dancing every time, everywhere you pass right now, everyone is screaming people power. So that ideology of the Bobby Wine effect and people power sort of rose as uh, the support of Asman Basaliwa from where he was from 300 votes to the victory he is yet to notice in a few hours to go. Uh, but also, we can also put it clearly that uh, NRM did not do much in terms of mobilization. You know that there are some of uh, the members of parliament that did not jump onto the rally of uh, the NRM candidate, John Francis Okecho, because some of them were actually split because you have this actually situation of Tango Doi and Justin Kasule Lumumba where they're split within the NRM party. So some of them who are on the camp of Justin Kasule Lumumba did not actually go ahead to support John Francis Okecho and that was a big blow in John Francis Okecho's camp. Uh, and then lastly, opposition itself was divided because you have, uh, you have uh, some camp in FDC that, is n that was not agreeing with, uh, you know, fronting units and Namatende. And that is, most of it is actually from the Mujishamuntu camp. So you have members of parliament who are neighbors of this constituency, but actually instead did not jump on to. For example, Abdul Katuntu was not anywhere seen, and yet he is a neighbor of this constituency. So Solomon, that was uh, some of the factors that determined this vote right here. Solomon? Right, uh, Karen Mugume, many thanks for uh, that update right there and that analysis. It's quite deep, but we will throw more light on this issue. I have, I have with me in studio senior journalist Idris Chigundu, who will be discussing much more on what could have uh, caused uh, the swing in that vote and the developments in Bujiri. But we have Joseph Sabidi standing by from the Tally Center. Joseph, results are beginning to trickle through. How do they look like? Well, we continue to give you some of the provisional results. Like again, we said the, provi the, the prerogative of announcing the final results lies with the Independent Electoral Commission. And so you treat the results we give you as just that, uh, provisional results. Now I have uh, some of the results from what we have been able to gather uh, here at Solomon. If I can give you results uh, for Bujiri Modern Primary School, Asman Basal got 122, 125 for John Francis Okech of the NRM and 32 uh, for Eunice Namatende of the Forum for Democratic Change. Now, uh, uh, that is a Bujiri Modern Primary School N to Z. Uh, we, we, we also, we give you uh, Bujiri Parents Primary School 106 for Jemas Asman Basalira, 127 for John Francis Okecho, and 20 for Eunice Namatende. If we get you, uh, that is a Bujiri Primary School N to Z. And then uh, Buj uh, Bujiri Primary uh, Parents School, Bujuri Parents, uh, School A to M, we have 123 for Bujuri, 123 for John Francis Okecho, that's a tie there, and 41 uh, for Anama Tende units. Now, if we go to Zahara Mosque A, we have 213 Asman Basalura, 123 John Francis Okecho, 41 for units Nama Tende of the FDC, and then Bujuri Modern Primary School, that is A to M. 142 for Basalura, 145 John Francis Okecho, 50 units now attended. Generally, the results we are getting Solomon indicate that uh, the race has narrowed down uh, between uh, Asman Basalura and uh, John Francis Okecho of the NRM. But again, the provisional results we get actually give an early lead for Asman Basalura. We're looking forward to the final declaration and assessment and analysis of the results from the Electoral Commission. But let's speak to uh, the Democratic Party's uh, John Paul Kenneth. Kakande, who has been part of the Basalra campaign, what, what does the results look like? What does the, does the result look like from your assessment? It was a, a tough race, of course. Uh, as you know, the stakes were very high. The president spent some time here, and he said he was very serious about this campaign. But before I say anything, I want to thank the people of this constituency, Vujiri uh, Municipality for the love they have shown to our candidate. 
and the temptations they have foregone to see to it that Vasadiwa receives this victory. Uh, unofficial, I can say that we have won this race. It has been a tough race, but yes, we have also been tough, and we are home and dry. Okay. We, are, we have only come here to have an official uh, announcement from the Electoral Commission, but we are very sure we have it in our bag. And it is home and dry. All right. As a lawyer, you know that that prerogative of, is for the Electoral Commission. We'll wait for that final declaration. But, but, but let's talk about the underlying factor in this campaign. The fire between two forces that are supposed to be forces for change working together. A lot of people thinking it was quite embarrassing. The fight between the camp of your candidate and the Forum for Democratic Change. Let's talk about that. I think what is most, most important and what the people have shown us that it, it is about it isn't about where we are coming from. It is about where we want our country to go. We have to put aside personal advantages as political organizations and as individuals and put the country first. That's the message the people are sending to us, that we should swallow our pride and do not look ourselves at the big fish or the one who say this and it happens. What we have to put forward is the struggle to liberate mother country. That is the message. We came here to support the Jema candidate, not because he comes from our party, but because we believe Jema is part of the struggle to liberate mother Uganda. And we want everybody's hands on the deck. This struggle is about everyone. So I am happy that the people have listened. They have listened and they have decided that, yes, let's work together with these people and take the country forward. But I also think that it is a moment of reflection. Those who did not see yesterday, they can see today, that we need to work together to liberate Mother Uganda. Okay. Uh, uh, from, from your own assessment and from, from the camp, what do you think uh, determined this election? What were the factors that played out in this campaign? The message was about progress, the future where we want our country to go, and the energy of the campaign machine. Our campaign machine was very, very energetic, made up of young people who think that we must hold our hands and move forward. That has brought a lot of fire in our campaigns. And if you see our following, most of the young people are saying, yes, the people must have their power, and they were giving power back to the people. Yes. Your camp was accused of playing the sectarian, the sectarian card. A lot of accusations, especially coming from the FDC, that your candidate used his religion and his tribe as a big factor in, in this campaign. Did you witness that as someone who worked with him? I've been uh, on most of the rallies, and even those I did not participate in, I was listening to many of the speakers. The best message that was being sent out to them is one of unity. For the, for, for, for the single purpose of liberating Mother Uganda. Not a divisive message. Most of the people in this campaign do not come from this area. They are not a soldier. But they think that there is a common denomination that binds us as Ugandans. Although we come from different parts of the country, but we share a similar destiny, which binds on us the duty to work together and deliver to Mother Uganda. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you for sparing time to speak to us. That is uh, Kenneth Paul Kakande of the Democratic Party, one of the individuals who have been a strong pillar behind the Asman Basara campaign. And so, as we wait for the official declaration, the early, the exit polls indicate Gemma could be on the way to having their first member of parliament. Actually, in Bujiri town, there are already celebrations. People are flashing the, our, the people power, our power our perspective, the, the message that was used actually in the campaigns. And so a lot of people actually looking forward to, uh, you, you know, uh, the final celebrations. And like we said, the, the prerogative of announcing that final result is actually uh, for the independent electoral commission and the telling that should be happening in, in a couple of days. And, and maybe if I can speak to Moses Pijira here, who was part of the Asman campaign, uh, how, how does it feel like? What, does, what do the results look like for you? Uh, definitely we are very happy because we have won the war and we have won the battle. So we are, ex we are just waiting for our final declaration and we, we go and do other things. 
yes. What, what do you think uh, swayed the elections in your favor? You were on the campaign trail from the word go. Uh, you see, uh, politics is dynamic. Uh, in 2005, we as DP, we thought that we are very strong by then. And we failed to, to reflect with the, the demands of the people. So then, Dr. Vesja and FDC merged. Uh, but as we talk now, they are also in the, the same situation as we were in 2005. Now, the new dynamics in politics is the people power, our power. That is the new, uh, uh, that, that is the new political... Is it too early to call? It's just one, one constituency. Uh, it is not one constituency, definitely, because there were three 